Hi guys, I'm doing a tutorial today on Molly Harrison's image Alice in Wonderland. It's really pretty and I really like doing this one. I'm going to pop through and get started. So we're going to jump straight into it today. I have printed this image on Express at Blending Card and I'm using Copic markers. So this image is an image from Molly Harrison called Alice in Wonderland. All I've done for now is a layer of YR000 over the entire skin and I'm coming in now with YR00 just to fill out those shadow areas now. So we're going to use a few different colors through this one. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow through her uh, around her eyes as well in this one. So um, I really love this image. It is from her mystical coloring book. Uh, you can purchase it as an individual image on Etsy as well. So I'm coming in with B000 and I'm just going into the shadow areas and um, putting that in just to deepen those up a bit. So if you are interested in a more in-depth uh, version of this tutorial you can actually get that on uh, Patreon so I'll pop a link to my Patreon uh, page in the description below so if you'd like to check that out uh, just follow that link so I've just come in again and filled out the eyeshadow area with that B triple zero and now I'm just blending that out with the E triple zero I've got YR triple zero and I'm going over the top of that now So we're starting to get some nice uh, skin tone through that. So I've got some R20 and I'm putting in some of this around the cheek areas just to show the shadow there and I'm blending it out with E000. So there are a lot of online classes that you can do to learn more about uh, skin, uh, colors, all those sorts of things. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to review a couple of online classes. I think that it would be good to do something like that. We have uh, book reviews and pencil reviews and, and things like that. So why not uh, have a look at doing a review on an actual class? So I'm going to have a look at doing that soon. So um, I'm I've gone in with that R20 and just done those shadow areas again and blended it out with E000. I've now coming in with my YR000 to go over the entire skin area. So if you are interested in doing an online class and you're really not sure what it's all about, um, I'm going to do a couple of reviews on ones that I have already done and also ones that I'm actually enrolled in at the moment. So um, obviously I have to finish those classes for the review to occur. So once that happens, I will pop those details up here on YouTube. So I'm coming back in with YR000 and I'm just deepening up those uh, areas, sorry, the whole skin area now trying to create some nice uh, flesh tones through there. So I have done a couple of book reviews, uh, some Selena Fennick uh, coloring books that I've re uh, received in the last week. Uh, also, uh, I've already enrolled in two other coloring classes at the moment. Um, I'm doing a couple of interesting things. One of them I'm halfway through already and I'm very excited to share. It's, it's been a, a bit of a journey and it's really great to learn something new from someone different. So um, I actually have been doing coloring classes for a long time with one particular person and I do think that um, I didn't realize how much other stuff was actually out there. So I know, um, you know, due to loyalty and things like that, it, it feels sort of hard to sort of leave one person who is teaching you things but I do believe that we can learn a lot from a lot of people um, so it is good to try things out and move around and do um, different classes with different people um, it then gives you a broader outlook on um, what you're doing and your medium in particular uh, shows you uh, different ideas as well because not everybody knows everything the same um, and they don't teach the same either so some people may be able to teach you better than other people so whatever you feel comfortable doing is what I would do so if you for example sign up to an, an online class and you really really can't stand the person's voice you're going to have a lot of trouble learning something from that because you're concentrating on what that person's saying and how they're saying it instead of concentrating on the techniques and the things that they're trying to, to show you. So look, they're just a small example of, of 
why I would try different things and have a look around and see if there's other classes available as well. So um, don't just, um, I guess, narrow your search and, and because a particular a website has a lot of different classes, just remember that, um, you know, those things as well. So maybe try one first and then have a look around and see if you can find something else. Anyway, let's get back to this coloring in. So um, I'm going to start on her eyes and we are going to put some nice depth into those eyes and make them really stand out. So I'm starting with BO6 and I'm just doing the top areas of the eyes and I'm blending it out with BO5, BO4 and BO2. So the BO2 is at the bottom and the lightest color. I'm also putting a little bit of that in the eyeshadow area as well and blending that out with B000. So I've got B000 a little bit further out. So she's now looks like she's wearing some blue eyeshadow as well. So I'm going to come into the... Uh, I'm going to, sorry, blend that out with YR000 and then E000. Then I'm going to come in and um, just mark out some areas around the eyes with the yellow. So this is just a little bit of a highlight color. It was in um, the original image done by Molly Harrison and I did think that it made the eyes sort of stand out a little bit more. I'm putting in some gray now for the shadows in the eyes. So I'm using C3 and C1 and also the colorless blender there to blend that in nice and smoothly. So we want to create that look that the eyes are a sphere and not just flat on the page. So I'm going to use black around her eyes in a moment and do all those eyelashes and the pupils and things like that as well. So I've got some R59 and I'm just outlining the lips and I'm putting some shadows in there. I'm going to blend it out. I've got a little bit of B69 just to deepen that up a little bit. And then I've got some R27 and I'm just filling in the rest of the details there. So I'm going to come back in later. I'm just deepening up the shadows again. But um, I'm going to come in later and put some white on there to show uh, the, a reflection and shine off those lips. So I've got the black marker now and I'm coming in to do the pupils, the eyelashes and around the eyes. If you feel that this is too little for you to use your marker, um, you could use a thin fine liner to do that with as well. I just wanted to deepen them up and I'm quite happy to use my marker. Although it is a little bit um, uh, full at the moment so it has actually leaked on a couple of pictures so I make sure that I'll try and take the cap off when I notice that's starting to happen. But um, you could just use a, a Sharpie fine liner or any brand I guess um, just to come in and fill those areas out. So I've got B69 and I'm actually going to do the dress and the um, headband in this as well. So we're going to use the same colors that we use in her eyes on her dress and her headband. So I've just done, gone in and put in the shadow areas and I'm just coming in, blending that out now with B06 and then I've got some B05. So I'm just leaving a little bit of white in the top part there and I'm going over that with some B04 and I've still got one little tiny spot there which I'm going over with the B02. You could also leave a little bit of a white patch there. You don't have to cover it over like I have there but I'm going to come back in later with my gouache and uh, the white gouache and put um, a little highlight on there. So I'm coming in now and doing all the shadow areas of the dress and I'm creating my own little creases um, and extending the ones that were already there uh, to go right through to the other side so you can see as I go through there that some of the lines I put in I make them a little bit longer than the artist drawn lines and some of them I'll try and join up together with the other side as well so I'm going in to put those in first so just talking about online coloring classes, I have done a few classes with Kit and Clatter. Um, so they do have a lot of uh, different classes there. Uh, they are a mixture of different techniques and things like that. So um, for the clothing, there is a clothing class there as well. So it may be something that you'd like to check out as well. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, please do, if you... Um, sign up for a class let Elise know that I've sent you as well. So I'm popping in and I'm outlining all of the flowers and everything that's leaning on the dress as well. So I'm putting shadow areas there because this will be where 
um, it'll be darker because the shadow will be sitting on that so I'm going around the flower and the stem and her arms and things so I'm just going to finish off this now I'm going to blend this out with the B06 just going a little bit further down um, and out so making those lines a little bit longer and a little bit thicker to blend them out further so I'm going to do um, the B05 after that and blend a little bit further out and I'm going to just go down the color uh, gradients to the lowest color. So I'm coming in with BO4 and I'm going to redo the area again. So just going over the previous color and extending it a little bit further out towards the white areas of the image. So we can gradually see the color filling in the areas the more colors that we put on and uh, we want them to blend out nice and smoothly but we still want there to be shadows and things through um, the dress. So I've got that B05 and I'm just coming in and filling out a little bit further. I did notice here that I missed a little bit of the dress so I fixed that up as well. Just underneath her hand, I thought it was another stem, uh, but it is just part of the dress there. So I'll fix that up and fill that in later. So we're getting closer to closing up the gaps now. Just deepening up some of those shadow areas and I've got the BO4 now blending that a little bit further out. So we just want to leave a small amount for the really lightest color. So BO2 and I'm going in and finishing off those areas now. So you can see that there's a gradient of color from light to dark through each section of the dress and it does look like there's folds and ripples in the dress there now. Just going in with the B06 and deepening up those shadow areas. I'm deepening them and I'm widening them a little bit so that there's a little bit more shadow through there. So I've just run through all of the colors again and I'm coming back in again with that B02 just to lighten up the highlight areas again. You can actually leave white white space where the lightest color is and where the darkest color begins. I've got B28 and I'm coming in and putting a little bit more depth into the shadows. You can see now that those crease lines are starting to look really nice and deep and it's giving those um, folds the look that they're 3D. So just filling in under the arm there. So we've done the dress and the um, blue there on the headband. So I did do a short video on color wheels and choosing colors uh, for 
patrons on my Patreon page. So if you're interested in something like that as well, or would like to know how I choose my colors for my images, um, that's something to have a look at. It's not a very long video, um, but it is available to patrons. So um, I'm coming in, I'm going to use oranges um, through the rest of the main parts of the picture. So I'll use oranges in the cat and in the mushrooms there because they seem to stand out a bit. And also I'll use the orange through the flowers and things as well. So um, I'm going to try and um, bring in colours that are complementary to each other and will look good throughout the picture. I'm also going to use a little bit of a de different technique on the trees that I, I haven't used uh, that often as well. So I've got BO2. This top section of the dress I think is supposed to be white, but I still wanted to add a little bit of colour in there. So I've gone in with the BO2 and just lined around the areas on the collar there and in the cuffs of the sleeves. And I'm using B000 to blend that out. I've got a little bit of Y000 in there as well because it is in her eyes as well. And it is going to be in some of the flowers there as well. So I've got the colourless blender and I'm just blending that out so it smudges all uh, or bleeds together nicely. So it just looks like it's white with a little bit of colour through it now. I'm going to do the sleeves as well so that they um, finish off nicely too. So the dress is done. I did, as I said, miss that tiny bit underneath her hand, but I will come back in later and fix that up. Um, so I'm going to start on the hair and I'm going to do blonde hair. So I haven't, I don't think I've done a tutorial with blonde hair, but it's kind of more really light browns and a little bit of yellow. So I've got E55 and I'm going into all of the shadow areas of the hair and I'm putting little lines out uh, towards the middle parts of the hair. So what I'm trying to do is create a highlight area in the middle of each of the hair sections. So um, it's like the hair is wavy, some sections of it will be dark and some will be light. So that's what I'm going in and doing now. If the hair is really long and there's not a lot of waves or curls through it and you can't create, it's harder to create that highlight area, I would just go in and make my own dark area and fill it out to make it look like a highlight area. So I'm coming in and doing all of the curves. So anything that dips under, I'm doing darker. Anything that has something laying in front of it, I'm doing darker as well. And that's creating little sections of hair with highlights in it. So from the ends of the hair, I would do out towards the middle section of the hair. And then I'd come back from the other side and do the same thing. So that's all I'm doing. I'm going in and marking all of those darker areas first. And then I'll come back in and fill out the rest of the hair. So I'm using a little lines. It's hard to see in the video. It's not very, very close up there, but I'm just flicking my marker to create little lines out towards those highlighted sections or the white areas of the hair. So I'm just going to go along and finish that off. So now I'm bringing in E53 and I'm blending out a little bit further. So I'm going over everything I've previously done and I'm making those lines a little bit longer and a little bit thicker. So I'm trying to produce, as I said, a shadow and a highlight area. So I'm going to run through and cover this all over the area. So it's kind of already starting to look a little bit blonde. It may need some yellow through it to really make it stand out.
So I've decided to add some YR14 and just come back over the top of those areas and bring it a little bit further out. So we are getting a little bit of that yellow tone through there and putting a little bit of orange into the darker areas of the hair. And that's to help with the complementary colours there and to... Um, show I guess a little bit of reflection too from the cat and things like that so I'm um, just popping in that now Okay, so now we've done that color, I'm going to bring in E51 and I'm going to go over the top of that and blend it most of the way through the highlighted section now. So it's actually going to dull off the red side of it, but it's still going to give it a golden look as well. So I'm popping in to do that now. So I've got some white triple zero and I'm coming in and putting a little bit of this into the highlighted areas and a little bit in the shadow areas as well to brighten that up a little bit now. I've got E55 and I'm coming in and redoing all of the shadow areas just to deepen them up a little bit. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that YR14 through. So I'm going to use a little bit of YR12 just to soften that off a little bit now. So I'm really starting to like the depth through that. I think it looks good and I'm actually really happy with the color of it. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to start the mushrooms next or toadstools, whatever they are on the side. So I've chosen some reds and uh, shading all the way out to orange for the toadstools or mushrooms on the side there. So I'm going to go and start on those. So I've got R59 first and I'm coming in underneath the bottom of the mushroom and also right on the very left of the mushroom and I'm putting little dashes underneath the little spots on the mushroom and I do apologize for the video being cut off there I will turn that in a moment so I've just put um, shadow areas in that and I'm also going to do the same on the other side but I'm going to bring them from the right hand side in towards the left so I'm blending this out now I've got some R29 to do that I'm blending out the R29 with R17 in a moment too I've got the R17. So I'm just extending these lines a little bit further out and um, thickening them up a little bit. So you can start to see the color filling in underneath each of those areas as well. I'm trying to create the illusion that those little spots are actually on top of the mushroom rather than in 
the mushroom. So I've got four, uh, sorry, R14, and I'm just going over that again. And I'm going to blend it off with YR04. So you can see the little bit of orange tone in the tip of the mushroom there now. So I'm going to go back in and do all the same things again, repeating that just to deepen that up and to just create that real warmth through it, also to help with those shadows. So I've got some E33 and I'm putting that in all of the little spots on the left side of them, blending them out with E31. Got E50. I think I'll deepen up these spots here with some E35 just to make them a little bit more uh, deeper on that side. So I'm going to repeat the same process on the toadstool on the right hand side. But this time I'm going to go from the right as dark and um, bring that out towards the left. So I'm doing underneath first each of those little sections there to pop, make them pop off the page a little bit more and then blending out with the previous colors that I've used. So I used R59, R29, R17, R14 and YR04. So I'm going to continue on and finish that up and then I'll come back in and deepen up underneath those shadow areas again. And then we're going to have a look at doing the stalks as well. So I'm not going to put orange as much through the stalk. I'm going to keep the stalks as like a brown color. So I've just finished it off that now. I'm just re-blending that shadow area out, making it a little bit darker. So the colors had desaturated a little bit there. So I'm doing the top parts again as well. So E35, E33, E31, E50. So before I move on and do the stalks, I want to actually fill out the rock that the cat is sitting on behind her. So I'm going to use some C colors to do that. So I've got C9 and I'm coming in and doing all of the shadow areas. So wherever anything's laying on top of that rock there. So under the cat's feet, uh, where the mushroom's leaning up against it, things like that. So I'm going to go and pop in the shadow areas with C9 first. So I'm going to come over the edge of that dark area and blend that out or soften it off with the C7 and just extend that a little bit further out. So trying to soften up the edge of the other grey so that um, it smoothly blends out to the lighter grey. So I've got C5 and I'm coming a little bit further out. The main part of the rock will be this color. So I'm just going in and filling in that color now. So I'm going over the previous color to smooth that color off uh, or, or just over the edge of it to smooth it off so that it looks like it's blended out nicely. So I've got C3 and I'm going in and finishing off those areas now. I'm not worried too much about um, the texture of it or blending out the color that I've done because it will put a little bit of texture through that. So we're going to start in the trees. I'm going to do these a little bit different. I'm not going to blend in the color properly. So I'm using E35 and I'm just going into the shadow areas now and putting the lines and the creases into the tree. I've got some W5 and I'm coming in and putting little blotches around that area now. So I'm not actually sort of going over and over and over it. I'm kind of just blotching this on and bleeding it out a little bit so that um, it looks rough and um, not um, streaked or anything. So I'm coming back over that with the W3 and I'm doing the same thing. So you can see I'm kind of dabbing that color on and pushing it out towards the highlight area. So I'm trying not to uh, to use like I guess 
use lines to color that in I was trying to keep that nice and blotchy so I've got some YR14 and I'm just putting that in on the mushroom area now so I've done it on to the shadow side there underneath and on the side I'm blending it out with E33 then I've got some E31 and I'm finishing that off so I'm going to put um, some of that blotchy shadow underneath there as well so I've brought in the C7 and C5 and I've just sort of dabbed that on into that shadow area there so it's actually a really nice effect it just shows um, texture and things like that through there so I'm going to come in and start on the cat in a moment I'm just putting E4 in some of the pinker areas there I'm going to fill out all of these flowers first before I move on so I'm using YR04 and I'm going into the middle sections of each of those flowers in that larger one I've just put dots in and around the dots that were already in there now I've just realized here that the dress wasn't finished so I'm just filling out that out back out with the blues again just to finish that off because obviously now I'm concentrating on those flowers I can see that I've missed a spot there so I'm just filling that in now. So I'm going to bring that YR04 in and just do a little bit more into those flower areas so just deepen them up and bring it in further. I've got Y15 and I'm just blending that out. So I'm just doing that on all the middles of the flowers. I've got E55. Just going in and putting a bit more shadow area on there. I'm just going to bring that video back a little bit and also brighten it up a bit so that we can see a little bit better there. So I've got some Y02 and I'm coming in and filling out the flower petals here on all of these sections. So I'm covering over that full flower with the hearts on it and just doing that in this big one as well. I'm coming in with Y17 and I'm just lining all of the lines. And I'm going to come out finally with YR16 and finish those off there. I'm going to come back in with that Y17 and just blend that off a little bit. And then go over everything there with the Y02 again. So we've created some depth and lines through that flower. Now on this one here I'm going to go around the hearts with YR16. Then I'm going to blend it out with Y17 and then finish it off with the YR2 again. Sorry, Y02 again. So we've got the illusion there that there's a little bit of depth there and the middle part's actually uh, popping out more. So I've got uh, B63 and I'm just doing a circle around each of the flowers there and I'm blending it out with B60. So I'm not putting heaps of colour through. I think they maybe could have been white but um, I wanted to just put a little bit of colour through them just to uh, show a little bit of shading there. So I'm coming into the kitty now. I'm doing YR18 and I'm going in and lining all of the lines that are already there. Um, so just bringing it in all of those areas and just I'm using little flicking motions. So if you need to practice flicking the marker, go ahead and do that here because um, there's a lot of hair there to do. So all I'm doing is coming, putting pressure on the marker at the the start part and then I'm flicking it out and releasing the pressure as I go so um, just go along and do this so what I'm actually doing is one side of this bottom part I'm doing putting it more towards the like flicking it out towards the bottom of the cat but some of the other side I've flicked up towards the top of the cat so um, there will be a bit of a gap in between um, but I just wanted to show that the white hair is coming over the top of that so having the little gaps in between there uh, gives the illusion that there's actually white fur in those sections as well. So I'm going in and filling out that and then I'm going to blend that out. So I'm blending it out now. So that was the YR16 now. I'm coming in over YR18 and doing YR16. So I'm going to continue to blend that out further, still trying to leave a bit of a white gap in the middle. So I've got a YR14 and I'm going over the top of those colours and I'm doing mainly the area that flicks down. I'm trying to leave the area that flicks up a little bit and I'm only doing a slight sort of flick up on those areas. So we wanted to try and make sure we still leave a little bit of white there just to show that it's a, a ginger cat.
So I've swapped out that marker, I'm bringing in a little bit lighter, so I've got YR12 and I'm doing the rest of the face with this. I've kind of done it roughly and unevenly around that area because I still wanted some white to flick through there. I've just gently flicked this through the wider areas as well. I've brought in W0 to create a little bit of um, texture through those areas. Uh, orange parts because we wouldn't just have orange we'd have other colors through there as well i'm using the w3 just to create some shadows in the deepest parts of that and also behind where the hair is sitting and things like that as well so that w3 i'm just putting in little dabs around the face as well and i've put some underneath the mouth there now i had a little bit of trouble with the mouth my pen that I was going to use didn't work properly so um, I did have a little bit of issues with the whiskers but you can sort of play with it and do it um, how you like. Um, now I have some YG21 because I wanted to put a little bit of a reflection in her hair and I've just covered the entire eye area there um, with that YG21 and I'm going to come back in and finish the eyes off in a moment. Um, I've just moved on to the tail, so I'm using the same colours in the tail. So we've got YR18, YR16, YR14 and YR12. And also a little bit of W0 and some W3 as well there. So I'm going in to finish off this tail now. It's a little bit quicker than the rest of the body because there's only a small amount there. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that YG21 through the fur and also put um, a little bit of that through. So I've got my black marker now and I'm just lining all the black areas. I think I did get a little heavy handed with the cat eyes. I'm also going to do the mouth and between the teeth and also the whiskers in the black. And then I'm going to go over the whisker areas with some white um, gouache or gouache however you say it um, through over the top of that to bring in the white highlights. So before I do that, I'm going to finish off the grassy area down the bottom here. So I'm going to use some darker uh, colours for the grass. I'm going to use some G99 and G94 on all the stalks and the stems. And I'm also going to do some flicking here as well. So if you've been practicing flicking, um, this one will be good for you as well. So I'm just popping in first and doing all these longer grass areas with these darker colours. And I'm going to blend those out with the G94. So I've lined all of the, um, the flower petal uh, leaf there as well. So before I move on to the next colour, I'm just grabbing a pa I've grabbed a piece of paper and I'm just flicking over that and into the wider area. So you can see little stubs of grass there. I'm going to do the same thing with the G94 and then I'm going to fill out all of those stem areas with that as well. So we're trying to create a texture through the grass and I'm going to use lots of different colours through that. So I'm going to go to the YGs and use YG99 and then I've got YG97 and YG95. And then I'm going to finish off by going over the entire area with some YG23. So I'm just using my piece of paper there and I'm using it to cover over sections so that I can flick out. So just be careful that you don't leave uh, horizontal lines as well as the vertical lines because once it builds up on that paper it can bleed through and cause that to happen. So I'm just going to randomly pop through here and finish off this area for you. I do apologize for missing some of those sections there. Um, it is fairly random and you, and you can see on the right hand side that I did do that. There as well. So I've almost done filling out those sections now so I'm going to bring that YG23 through now and just blend that all the way through and over the top of those areas. So it's to smooth it out a little bit but also you can still see the um, flicks and the blades of grass through that area. I'm going to move them back up to the cat here and I'm going to try and finish him off as well. So I'm just using my black marker and I'm just lining this in and then I'm going to come back over in a moment and cover it with some white. So I've used a fine liner there just to fill in the areas around the teeth. So 
So it kind of looked a little bit scary now, um, but when I come back over it with the white, it does sort of um, soften that up a little bit there. So once I've added in all of my uh, white areas here, so I'm doing all the reflective areas now with the uh, white, it's white watercolor paint or gouache or gouache, and it is opaque. It's titanium, um, titanium white color. So I'm coming in and I'm just filling that out. I've just wiped that off because I didn't like it and it has lightened up the black a little bit, which was good. So I'm going to go back over and reline that now. So I'm also going to put reflections in the eyes and on the hair and on parts of the mushrooms and things like that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these off then. I'm going to do the background now. I did skip a little bit of the background. Um, just explain a little bit of that when I get up to that bit there. So we have almost finished the picture. I did use some, uh, they're just dry pastels. Some of them are cheaper brands, some of them are branded. And all I did was grab a really soft brush and rub over the pastel and then rub it onto my page. So I've used blues, purples, yellows, oranges, and reds to get that through. And I've just used a big brush to dust off the excess dust, dust in between there. So that's all I have done on that background, but it was really, really effective. So guys, I hope you really liked this tutorial today. Don't forget to put a fixant or a sealant over the top of that pastel because it will smudge onto other things there. Um, if you do like to, uh, would like to join our Facebook group, please uh, come along and do that. All of the links are in the description below the video there. Um, also, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I'm using a kneadable eraser here just to rub some of the color off the hair there as well. And then I'm going to spray that with a fixative and our image is finished. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.